Shalom Chaverim and Shabbat Shalom to all of you, wherever you are around the globe. Some of you, the Shabbat already came in. Some of you are preparing for the Shabbat. Uh, this is a, a very special Shabbat. My name is Rabbi Itzhak Shapira. I'm the founder of Avat Ami Ministries and Yeshiva Tshuva. It's my pleasure from time to time when I'm not traveling to teach you here a few words, Dvar Torah, uh, words of Torah, before we walk into uh, the Shabbat together. I want to remind you that if you're interested in more detailed lessons, check our website, avatami.org. Check out our YouTube channel. One of my Talbidim, Tamir Kreisman, teaches every week, give you a special Shi'ul Torah called the Pearls of the Torah but now I transfer to him and he's doing a terrific job in bringing you Devar Torah, Ashiu, uh, every week. Because of my schedule, I'm not able to do it every week, but I want you to know that uh, studying and practicing Torah is the most, single most important thing that you can do. Now, uh, before I travel again to um, Israel for another Torah revival after Yom Kippur, um, I wanted to, to take a moment and share with you a few things from the Torah portion this week. We are in Parashat Vayelech. Parashat Vayelech means to walk, and they walked. Um, this Shabbat is also known by the name Shabbat Shuva, Shabbat of Return, usually the Shabbat between Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur is known by the name uh, Shabbat Shuva. Tishrei 1 is Rosh Hashanah, Tishrei 10 is Yom Kippur. I want to talk to you for a few, just a few moments, because those 10 days that we're in right now, not by the name, the days of awe. In Hebrew, we say, Ayamim Anoraim, the terrible days. Why did they call the day of awe? Because this is the days that Hashem, Tishrei 1, he judges in the world, the next 10 days, he judges the house of Israel, preparation for the day of judgment called Yom Kippur. The one question that I know everybody I want to ask themselves is, should we first as Messianic believers, should we make a teshuva? And I don't think I need to answer this to you. The scriptures, including the Brit HaChadashah, repeat it again. The answer is absolutely yet. yes. We have to return. We have to make a teshuva. The bigger question that we have to ask ourselves, how does one make a teshuva? What does teshuva look like? How do we know that if the teshuva that we are making is the appropriate teshuva to God? Chazal, our sages, have been asking the exact same question. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, very, very short Torah portion, we are noticing a pattern that starts in the beginning of the portion. It says, in the beginning of the portion right there, uh, we, we read that Moses, as he preparing to depart, okay, his heart is burdened for his people. And he give a word to the Israelites. He wants to deal with them on the topic of returning to God, okay? And he's saying to them that the way you return to God, I just come a couple of you highlights. He says, you notice in the Torah portion this week, he said to write the Torah. You know, there's been a Jewish tradition going for thousands and thousands of years that every household used to take what's called the siyum, the end of the Torah, and write the siyum on inside their house. In essence, every house had some sort of form of a Torah, like it assumed the ending part. Why? Because it's coming from this Torah portion here that is talking about those things. And here it says, first of all, that a teshuvah, write yourself something, a teshuvah is not just an individual thing, it's a cooperative. In verse 12 says, Haka'al et am, anashim, ve'ataf, the children, they, they adore everybody should hear this word. Teshuvah, as well as Torah, is a cooperative. So one thing that I want to encourage everybody to do when, when 
Tuesday hits and Yom Kippur is here, please make sure that you go to a synagogue. Make sure that you are in a community. Don't just sit on Facebook all day. That's not what Yom Kippur is about. A teshuva is a corporate event, just as salvation is a corporate event. I know that this sounds very strange to you, but that's exactly what Paul says in Romans 2. So that all of Israel shall be saved, okay? He's talking about the corporate salvation of Israel. Similarly, a teshuva is something that we do together. We pray together. We say, Forgive us. You know, we come before God and we ask for forgiveness corporately. So the first thing I want just to highlight to you, that the concept of tshuva is something that we must do corporately. And how do we do it? Right here, the Torah is saying we are to do it in a demeanor. There is a certain demeanor to do a teshuva, to come before God. Remember, we are not coming in front of our friend or our body, we're coming before Melech HaMlachim and Dona Adonim, the master and the Lord of all things, right? Now, if you come before the master, before the king, again, you must know that you have to approach him with a certain reverence, but look what it says here to Joshua. He said to the Joshua, again and again, we see this repeating the Torah portion this week, Chazak, the emats. Those two words, we see them repeat again and again. The word chazak comes from the word chozek, chazek, litchazek. It's talking about strengthened, being strengthened. But then he said the word emats or the word omit, talking about being brave. Teshuva, write yourself in your note, is not something that you just do corporately, but to do a proper teshuva, one must be brave. Okay, it is require you to be brave to come before Hashem and make yourself open and clean and transparent before God. And this is something important. In essence, God saying here, if you truly want to make a teshuva, you have to be brutally honest, right? We go through 39 different type of prohibition things we broke and we recite, recite them again and again and again. At the end of the day, it's not about us reciting everything. God wants us to become truly transparent to him. Now the question still becomes, yes, we can come to God and we can say, we are sorry, we are transparent, we, we are guilty, we can, we can, we can spill our kishkin. Is that make a tshuva legitimate? And the answer actually going to shock you. By the way, if you don't mind, share this broadcast right now. This is arguably one of the most high holidays teachings I'm going to give you because we're talking about returning, returning to God. How do we make a proper return to God? You can spill your guts out and it's still not going to be a proper teshuva to God. What make a proper teshuva to God? Look what it says here. I want you to look with me in the portion in Deuteronomy 31, verse 18. Actually, if we we'll start in verse 17, it says, Then, then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day. Notice again, it's a corporate thing. Teshuva is a corporate thing, just as, 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 as salvation is a corporate thing. And I will forsake I will forsake them and I will hide myself for them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall come upon them. So that they will say in that day, again, the key word here is the word they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? So wait a second. If we're coming to God and we say, oh, this evil came because this God is not, a, is that not enough for Teshuvah? If we say, God is not with us, eh, we're sorry, God, we're sorry, please forgive us. Is that not enough? In Chazal, our sages have been asking the exact question. And I want you to listen to the answer that is given us here from the text. It says, in Otsarot Torah, the following. Tamoa meod. It is very strange. Me'acharu b'nei Yisrael mit'orim, right? The children of Israel are awakening. 
Betshuva, just exactly what we see. They say, oh, God is not with us. We, we missed the boat. They're awakening, and they recognize the sim. Umakirim bechet am. Vomrim bepemale, and they speak in full mouth. Al ken Elohim bekirvim matzah rota. God is not with us. That's why we're suffering. So why is the next verse saying, that's what Chazal said, I will hide my face from them. In essence, what Chazal are asking is, if one says, hey, I recognize I missed the boat. I am sorry, I missed the boat. Why is it that God says in the next verse, oh, no, I'm not going to show myself to them. I am going to hide my face from, from them. Why is it? And then Chazal asks the question, is there anything that is standing before a teshuva? In essence, if one is saying, I missed the boat, God is not with me, is that not enough for God? And the answer that Chazal is giving is that absolutely not. That is not a teshuva. In essence, I want you to understand something. If you walk into Yom Kippur and to Shabbat Shuva and you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I missed the boat with Hashem. Forgive me, God. I want to tell you something. You might not like me. You might want to turn it off. It's not enough. It is not good enough for God. That is not a teshuvah. Please understand, this is a principle that you see right here in the Torah. And make a fact, let's continue. Nachmanides says that the teshuvah in this text, again, I want you to hear this. I want you to, to hear this. Again, they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? Here is what Nachmanides says. He says, this type of teshuva, it is not a complete, perfect teshuva. Ela dvarim. What is the word? It's thinking things over. It's mulling things over. That is not a teshuva. And this type of teshuva will cause God. He said, Akadosh Baruch Hu Yastir Panav Mehem. This type of the teshuva will cause God to hide his face from them. If you're coming before God, according to Nachmanides, and you say, I miss the boat. That is not a teshuva. That's mulling over and thinking over that God says, I will turn my face from you so that you will make a real teshuva. So the question becomes, what is a real teshuva? What a real teshuva look like? We're going together. One, one minute. One minute. I hope you, you're following this where in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, verse 17 and 18, it's the key, it's the foundation, it's the principle of teshuva. Okay? Now, clear car comes and give a chidush. What is a chidush? Another interpretation. Okay? And he says, there are some who say that God hide his face from the evil. Okay? He says, no, he's just hiding his face partially, but he's showing himself partially. In essence, if you do half a teshuva, you get half of a revelation. If you do a full teshuva, you get a full revelation. Personally, I disagree with him. I agree with Nachmanides. So Nachmanides continue and explain it like this. How do we make a teshuva? What is the principle of teshuva? Why is the Torah says here that this awakening by the children of Israel is not enough? Listen to what it says. It says, En darko shel ha-yetzer ara lahti miyad averot chamurot ela masit averot kalot varak lahar shenil kad berishto masit lahavod avodah sarav lichpor baika. In essence, what it's saying here, that although the children of Israel confess their sin, they did not confess the root sin, they confess the symptom of the sin. Are you following what I'm telling you? This is a revolutionary concept. What Chazal is actually saying here that one can confess the, 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 
perhaps the, the sin itself, but he never deal with the root cause of the sin. And if one does not deal with the root cause of the sin, okay, he does not really make a teshuva. Okay? For example, Chazal here said that they make this thing, but he said, I'll call ara'a. Look what it says in the text here. Vanochi aster panai. Listen to the language, but God says, and I will surely hide my face in that day for all evil. Chazal said, ding, 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 ding. Pay attention to the language and to the word kol ara'a. What is the meaning of the word kol ara'a? Chazal says, kol ara'a means the shoresh. The shoresh in Hebrew is the word root. It is truly dealing with truth. What in essence God wanted them to confess is not the sin that they are committed now. He wanted to, to, commit it, to, to, to confess the source, the root of the sin. And only when they have done that, okay, then a real teshuva has been taken. Are you following what I'm telling you? If you want to make a teshuva today, don't just come to God. Don't just go to your brother and say, oh, I speak against you, Lashon around. Don't just come to God and say, hey, I cheated. Seek your heart. Ask the question, what is the root cause of those things? I know this is challenging. It's not easy. It's much easier to say, oh, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. That's one thing to say, I'm sorry for this and I'm sorry for that. It is another thing to seek deep and ask God, what is the root cause of all of those things? Are you following what I'm telling you? So it says, cholera, asher asa. It's really, truly really mean the root cause of the evilness that have been done. So how should we approach Shabbat Shuvah? How should we approach our relationship with each other? How should we approach uh, uh, Yom Kippur? It's simple. Don't look in the surface. Oh, I am fasting. Oh, I am saying I'm sorry for all of those things. This is not enough. You know, as a matter of fact, the Haftarah in Shabbat Shuvah, right? We read from the book of Hosea. And look what it says. It says there in the text, Shuva Israel, return or Israel, Ad Adonai Elohecha Kikashad, you're stumbling in your transgression, and then it tell us how to fix it. It says, Khu Imchem Devarim, take with you the Davar. Who is the Davar? Yeshua is called the Davar. Take with you Yeshua. In essence, what each and every one of us should be doing as a messianic believer. So say, oh, yeah, sure, I've taken my sin. Nonsense. This is not what we're talking about. We are talking about Yom Kippur, about Yeshua doing a heart transplant to each and every one of us. Open our heart, dissect every ounce of our heart, every intention, every kavana, and then... And then say, okay, Yeshua, reveal to me the source and change this source. That is the real teshuva that the scripture is talking about here when it says, return, it says in the English, take with you the words, okay? And this is important. Shabbat teshuva is a Shabbat that we should take with us our living word. You want to know what this Shabbat is? It's a Shabbat that each and every one of us should have an open heart transplant. Open our heart. Let Yeshua examine our hearts, not just our actions, not just our motivations, but truly action or, or truly search our hearts. Okay, that's why in the second uh, uh, portion of the Aftarah this week, if you saw my teaching, if you have not, it's available to you on the topic of Tashlich, right? To cast away things. We are not asking God to just take things. And, and, and remove them. I want you to need, listen to the word of the prophet Micah. What he says, he says, he says, He will have compassion upon us. He will say, do our iniquities He will have compassion upon us. He will say, do our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins unto the depth of the sea. You know, if something is going to the depth of the sea, friends, it's not coming back up. It's dead. You know what it is? What we're really talking about? Being dead 
completely dying to ourself, dying the flesh, being dying. This is really what a real teshuva is. Real teshuva is very difficult. And I want to challenge each and every one of you today. Don't just go through the motion of saying, I'm sorry. And they said, the blood of Yeshua covering. Ask for God. Here is the way you know if you receive new, if you receive true, if you've done the true Yom Kippur, true Teshuva, even Shabbat Shuvah. When we finish Yom Kippur, is your nature going to be different? Are you going to be transformed after Yom Kippur or you will go and commit the same sin again? You might dealt with the surface stuff, but Yom Kippur and Shabbat Shuva is the day that we're actually dealing with things from the inside out. And that's why we need Yeshua. You see, Yeshua did not just come to forgive our sin. That is a mistake to think about it this way. Yeshua did not just come so we forgive and atone our sin. But he came for something even greater. He came so that our nature will be able to change. You see, that's really to Yeshua is the fulfillment of Yom Kippurim. Why? Because if Yom Kippurim is about the Teshuvah, and if the Shuva is not just about confession, but it's about a change that should take place in each and every one of us. And if we true to one another, we know we cannot achieve it all ourselves. That means that we need somebody to come who enable us to go through a change and a transformation. And his name is Yeshua. That's why we need a Mashiach. A Mashiach is not the one who is going to fix all your problems. He's rather the, the tool that enables you to better yourself, to be changed from the inside out. Now think about this for a second. The text here in the Torah speaking about the fact that God will hide his face. The next question you need to ask yourself, why do I need to return? Returning to what? Look at the language here in the Torah. It is going to answer this question. He says, in this day, I will astel, astil panai. There is a duality in the Hebrew language. The word hastara, which means to hide, mentioned twice. Once he mentioned with the letter he, hastel, and then it's mentioned astil with the letter aleph. Chazal asked the question, why is this name mentioned what was? Because it's talking about God doing double hiding, but it's double hiding, but for what? Because the word there in Hebrew, as still, is rooted in the word Esther. Esther, like the book of Esther. Why? Esther has been used as a Messiah for her people. Esther is a picture of the Mashiach. As a matter of fact, if you take the word Esther and Mordechai, it's the letter Aleph and Men. Esther, Mordechai. If you take Aaron, Aleph, Aaron, Mem, Moshe. What about Eliyahu? Aleph, Elijah, Mem, Mashiach. In essence, God wants us to go through a process of change and transformation because he wants to make you the Messianic figure. I want you to understand this. I know that might sound to you heretical, but that is not my point. That is not my heart. The point of the matter, God wants in each and every one of us to go through a process that we ourselves take the image and the form of the Mashiach upon ourselves. Who is the real Mashiach? You and I. We are the Mashiach. You know, you're the Meshichim, Meshichim to your parents, to your children, to your grandchildren, to the families, to the world to come. They're not going to see Yeshua. They're going to see you and I. So in essence, he said, Hester still. There is a, a remez in the Hebrew language that he said, I want you to go through a process of self-cleansing from the inside out so that you will change yourself to the image like Esther, which is a representative of the Messiah of Israel. You understand what you are talking about now? Each and every one of you need to ask the question, God, why do you want me to repent? Is it just for the salvation? Is it just for salvation? And the answer is, of course not. The answer is found right here in this thing. God wants to raise in you 
an Esther. God wants to raise in you a Mashiach. God wants to raise in you a redemptive figure to the world around yourself because that's what the world needs. So what he does, he's giving you the power and he's partnering with you and Yeshua together so that you will be transformed to a redemptive figure so that you can then partake in the redemption of the world together with the Messiah. What can be more beautiful than that? God loves us so much. God trusts us so much. God believes in us so much that he said, I am going to take this vessel who is unclean and unpure and is not capable, and I am going to transform him from the inside out so that he or she will be able to carry the message of salvation to the world. I don't know about you, but for me, that is really good news. And if this is true, and if it is true that when you believe in what I'm telling you now, that's mean that together we must go to a real process of teshuva. Again, I am asking you and playing with you. Do not deal just with the surface. Deal with your nature and ask the Lord the following. I will pray for you right now, wherever you are, and agree with me in prayer as we walk into Shabbat Shuvah. Abba, in the name of Yeshua, just repeat after me, in the name of Yeshua, I'm asking that you change my nature. Don't just change my actions, but change my nature from the inside out. Lord, thank you that I am a new creation through Yeshua. And thank you that my nature is being changed and transformed on a daily basis so that I will be a vessel of redemption to the world around myself. Lord, I gladly stand and declare that you have created me to be a Messiah-like redeemer to the world around myself. Partner with me, use me, change me, and cleanse me, for your geula is near, for your redemption is near. In the mighty name of our Messiah, empower me. Amen and amen. Friends, it's not easy, but Yeshua is the tool that allow you to do this. So I wish upon you, as we walk to Shabbat Shuvah, as we walk to Yom Kippur, a meaningful fast, a fast that will cause you to be changed and transformed. And as you change and transform, may the entire house of Israel change and transform. And may we transform the entire house of Israel together. Anyway, I hope this word minister to you and bless you. If you want to sow into our ministry, you're welcome to do so. Avatami.org. We bless you and we wish you uh, Shabbat Shalom. God bless you. Little